Justin Stewart gets it, fights for more yard, and Stewart to the mouth of the goal line. Touchdown! Wow, that's just pure Stewart right there. That's a big time run by Jonathan Stewart. Welcome to Believe in Carolina Panthers here on Believe Podcast Networks. Do you believe? Rate and subscribe to the show on all major podcast platforms and subscribe to our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Video available weekly at youtube.com forward slash at Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Do you believe? Welcome into a brand new edition of the Believe in Panthers podcast here on Believe Podcast Networks. I'm your host, Dustin Johnson, joined by Sports uh, Illustrated Panthers beat writer Skylar Callahan and the Panthers all-time leading rusher, Jonathan Stewart. Uh, a lot to get into today. Um, some rule changes uh, in the NFL is really the headline of this pod uh, this week. Uh, and one just breaking that just happened about an hour ago that will drastically change how you view NFL football games. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, of course, the NCAA tournament's going on. We might get into that for a little bit as well. It's open mailbag. So if you're watching this on YouTube uh, at youtube.com forward slash at Tobacco Road Sports Radio, uh, if you're seeing this on Facebook, if you're seeing this on any of our Twitter uh, accounts, whether you're following Stu on Twitter or if you're following the Believe in Panthers account, uh, you can actually comment in the Twitter feed and it'll pop up here and we'll put it underneath the screen and we, we'll answer whatever questions you may have regarding Panther editions. Uh, Dan Morgan spoke yesterday via video about the new additions to the team, so we might get some of that as well. And the Panthers' ultimate 53-man roster. Uh, if you've been here for a couple of weeks, you know that we've been putting together the ultimate Panthers roster of all time. Um, we are at tight ends, and that poll uh, ended. It's at over, it's over at Believe in Panthers uh, over on Twitter. We'll reveal the two tight ends that will move forward and talk about those two gentlemen. Uh, guys, what's, uh, before I get into the reads and we get into the nitty-gritty of everything, what's going on this morning? How y'all doing? Man, crazy, crazy. Um, at least on my end. Um, I don't know if a lot of people have been following the stuff, but with uh, SI transitioning over everything, we kind of got halted um, in our production for a couple of days. We're still kind of ours. So we're transitioning everything over. It's going to be a while before it gets back to normal, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, just keep keep following us, keep watching the show and, and supporting us that way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Stu, what's happening, baby? How you doing? <laughs> what's happening what's up man <laughs> my dog on uh my phone was like going off but uh you didn't want to hear that ring that thing was piercing um <laughs> what's, what's that ringtone you got a song nah it's, we'll go it's, back the, to... it, it's the legit <laughs> <laughs> anyways <laughs> good morning people how y'all doing <laughs> probably the last ringtone i had i think it was lloyd you i think that might have been the last thing i had going on you remember that song yeah. Oh, I can't sing it, but <laughs> the last one I had was "If You Are What You Say." Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Luke oh, Bay Fiasco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That was that, back remember when that, that was not only popular, but like the, the voicemails where you would play it, you would like t- say like, "Hey, you've reached whatever." You got music playing in the back. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. you put it up to the hey. some jagged edge or something. Hey, call me back a little bit later on. I can't get to the hook right now. Here you go, and then you put it up to the uh, the TV. <laughs> it's that edge, is singing for the yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. that was a vibe that was a vibe back in the day um let me get to the reads first and then we'll get to uh what the owners did the owners have been meddling again uh they've, they've changed some rules so and there's one of the rules that uh they're kind of hot about so we might get to tell them why you're mad uh while we're here today um, yeah go ahead and hit that <laughs> hit it. <laughs> hit it. i'm mad let me get it prepared because yeah, yeah, there it is. Mad, so I'm gonna tell you why we mad. One right? of these rules is weird. The other one's actually kind of weird too. Um, so we'll we'll get into those. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Bet Online. Uh, the the tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for the season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round, right up to the national championship. You can access the most up to the date minute wagering uh, information anywhere from your desktop or your mobile devices, and even track your bracket real time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in all the action. Remi- uh, remember to use the promo code Believe B L E A V for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. And also, if you're if you got friends and you like to bet, maybe you want to bet with them, you can do it with our new sponsor, Cut. Um, it's a peer to peer social betting platform that's legal in forty states, including North Carolina. Uh, it has customizable odds tracking capabilities and an entire social network with group chats, user profiles, and rewards. All payments, no need for Venmo. Um, Sweet 16 starts Thursday night. My heels are in there. 
uh, ACC got three teams in there, Duke and State. I don't know how NC State managed to do this, but uh, they're all in there, and uh, they might end up seeing each other. So there's something you might want to bet on, uh, ACC fans. Use Believe, B-L-E-A-V, for a 10% welcome deposit bonus. Don't forget that promo code. Cut, put your money where your mouth is. These betting companies are out of control in North Carolina right now. I saw one where it's like, bet $2, get $250 back. And <laughs> like they're just like, my, get, my in here, get in here. About how she she had heard that they may be putting limits on how much you can actually, like how many times you can wager in a 24-hour period, which what? I don't I don't understand that. Oh, I mean, yeah. I guess you want to control people from having an addiction, but if you have an addiction, you're going to have an addiction. So yeah, I mean, don't, don't be like, here's the alcohol, and be like, now I want you just to sip it a little bit. You, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. I mean, now, yeah. now I, this isn't really a rule change. This is but, not the way. This is not the way you come up in life. This is not the way nah. you become rich. This is not the way you no. put your day job. <laughs> this is this is something for fun on the side, not well, your main hustle. One of my biggest uh, peeves um, is when I'm in the gas station and I and I see somebody. It looks like hard-earned money. I, I assume it is. They're just at the counter, just buying like three hundred dollars of lottery ticket, like scratch offs. So I'm just like, so fun. I'm like watching, it's like, yeah, <laughs> just give it to the schools. <laughs> like you're just giving it to the gas station, and they'll and they won't leave. They'll they'll get it, go over to the corner, start scratching them off right there. I'm just like, damn. Meanwhile, so you nice. got you. They'll meanwhile, just, you got somebody that's like actually like sitting probably outside of the store, actually needing a dime or something. two. <laughs> yeah, it's wild too. It, it looks like it's people that have already retired, so they're just using retirement money. <laughs> they're just spending their money on lotto tickets. So I don't know. It's crazy. Um, so let's, does, before you get into this, I just yeah. saw this across my phone, and I, I want to get my my why I'm mad out of the way because uh -oh. Stu's gonna have a really good one. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we messing. I'm gonna tell you why we messing. So I love football on holidays. I I love it. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. This just came out like five minutes ago from Jonathan Jones uh, from CBS Sports. He says the NFL plans to play on Christmas Day again in 2024, even though the holiday falls on a Wednesday. So this is a reversal of the league's previous stance. Christmas, ga Christmas Day games draw massive TV ratings. Uh, Andrew Beaton first on the report. Like, look, I love – Football on Christmas, Christmas Eve, if I don't have to work it, if it's an away game, it's great. The last two years I've had to work the, the Christmas Eve games. Not very fun to do when you happen to work on Christmas Eve. And I'm sure it's not fun for these guys either. But this is like a little out of control in my opinion. Because now you're really going to have to have almost like two half buys to space out. You, you can't play Sunday and then go Wednesday. And then yeah. go Wednesday or Sunday. You're going to have to have – a home almost a whole yeah, week off. That is a what you're saying is that is a quick turnaround for these guys. Yeah, three days, like <laughs> three boy, days. Boy, boy, There's no I, way that they can do it. It's it's gonna have to be Sunday, go a whole week and then play that that, that Wednesday. So you're gonna have like yeah. ten days off, but then yeah, you're gonna have to go ten days yeah. off again. Yeah, hopefully the got the teams that are playing on that Wednesday has. Are, they're not playing Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like Thursday night football or something the week. Before. Or maybe, well, yeah, maybe twice. So, hmm. yeah, maybe there's a Thursday night game or a Saturday night game during you'd that almost, time of yeah. the year. You almost have to have one of them coming off their bye, another one coming off of like a Thursday night game or something like that, or like they yeah. do uh, when they send them to Europe or whatever, and they kind of give them the bye after. I guess it can work, but are we getting to the point where we're getting too much football? Like. That's almost yeah. every day. <laughs> right now, we are living in the time where football is the most watched that it's ever been in the history ever. Let me. So, this is a good segue. Let me ask y'all this: Are y'all going to watch XFL? Yeah, I'll give it a try. I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, man, I don't the, know. Man, the Rock has got the Rock is behind it, fellas. I know, and y'all Rock killing. I, 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 I love the Rock. I love the rock. Anything I the do. Rock touches is your kingdom. It. He's actually yeah, wrestling now too. Like he's all over the place. So I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. It's like spring feels weird for football for me to watch it. It like, does. It, it's like, especially for me. I mean, y'all know I'm a big baseball guy. So once once the season starts on Thursday, like I'm yeah. I'm all into that. Yeah. So like, even if I try to get into spring football with XFL, it's just I don't have an attachment. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, and I'm, gonna way, I'm gonna try to get into baseball this year too. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to yeah, hop on the Pirates bandwagon with me? Nah, <laughs> I was gonna. Call I don't blame you. It feels like they bought a team. I don't uh, know. The Dodgers. I heard, that, spent, like, I heard like, they've been close to no cigar for too long. 
<laughs> I, man, I used to be in baseball huge. I, and it's weird. I get into these sports like in different parts of the calendar. So like this is the part of the calendar for me. March Madness kicks off really me focusing on basketball. And then I, I, the NBA playoffs are April, May, June. Once June is over and the finals are over, then it's kind of a dead spot for me for a little bit just to kind of recharge. Uh, and then August and you're back to football again. But uh, I don't really pay attention to baseball until we get to like close to the postseason. Um, and I used to follow the Braves. We don't have a team here. So the Braves were really close to draft. Like we got the draft next month. I, I think yeah. next week is when they start phase one of the offseason workouts. So, I mean, like we're going to sneeze and it, we're going to be back at training camp. We uh, do have some questions we can answer here in the, uh, in the gallery here. Steven asks, hey, we have to get clowny, y'all. What do you think? That one side looks rough if we don't. Uh, I think we talked about it on one of these shows that uh, Jadavion Clowney seems like the type that ain't going to show up to like August 15th. Like he's he's played enough <laughs> years where he's like, I don't want to do these OTAs. I don't feel like doing them. <laughs> I'll come in when uh, yeah. you come here to the very end. And, and yeah, go. we do. We definitely do need some edge help. Um, we obviously signed DJ Wanham. Um, I think that's how you say his name, right, Skyler? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Jaguars. Um, but I, I, I see that guy as, you know, you know, obviously he's talented. Um, what was he, he was a first round draft pick before or a second round? I think um, he was actually like a third or fourth. Really? Yeah. Uh, TJ Wan. He came from yeah. South Carolina, right? As Desmond looks that up, um, yeah. I think we he's a guy that's going to come in here and, and have something to prove, right? You know, started his career in Jack in Jacksonville, um, so he fits the prototype of a guy that's hungry. Um, and, and has the ability to to really channel that inner dog that um, you know we all been talking about this off season, and so uh, getting a guy like that in here that's great. But we definitely need a solidified edge rusher that offenses are going to have to plan for. Um, you know, getting after the quarterback, you know, this day and age is a must, and. We don't want to be like the Atlanta Falcons where they haven't been able to get to the quarterback for ages. So yeah, I, I'll say this, like the, the one I think overlooked departure because he's not a huge name, but I think losing Yitor is going to be a hit. Like you yeah. need a guy like that, that can, that can play the run. Well, he can get after the passer every now and then. Like, I, I think that's a bigger loss than people really. Yeah. Think. Oh, that's right. Kayla Vaughn from the Jags. That's who I'm thinking about. Not, uh, oh, yeah. Wanda. Kayla Vaughn Chase on. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, thank, you for, thank you for the uh, the uh, the correction there, James Island Panther. <laughs> uh, DJ Wanham was a fourth round selection from Minnesota back in 2020. Uh, he was I love them coming out. Yeah. I actually think I had him mocked the Carolina, one of the 84 mocks I do every year. But yeah, he was uh, he was an interesting player. And you got to think, too. He had the same sack production this past year as Brian Burns, and there's a reason why Burns didn't have the year he normally has because they were behind in every game. They're running the ball, but for Wanham too, you got to think like he had Daniel Hunter on the other side and still got eight sacks. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be more out there on the table for him. Is there are there any pickups from this past week that we might not have talked about previously? Nick Scott, or- Nick Scott was one. Jordan Fuller, Jordan uh, Fuller. Dan, Dan yeah. Jackson. Um, they're all kind of awesome. like I guess fill in the gap type depth guys. Depth yeah, guys. Depth. But but also two smart guys like I know Jordan Fuller has a history with Evero. And so I mean that's a plug and play guy. And then and just in the sense yeah. of getting, you know, your defense to where they're playing disciplined ball and you have, you know, Josie Jewel well, Jewel, um, who's obviously a smart player. Um High productivity um, over his seat, over his career so far, um, but smart, Yosh Neiman, always Yosh a good one. Yeah, Yosh is another one, um, a depth guy um, at the tackle position. You know, got to have somebody there for when injuries come around because this is a game where guys get injured. Um, obviously, the NFL is trying to pro, you know prohibit injuries to the max level these days um <laughs> but uh we'll get into it yeah <laughs> but we we'll get to that but um i think they're i th- think we've done a great job this off season just really going after it right and obviously these guys are gonna have to show why they you know were brought here um everything on paper right now looks great but 
um, obviously when those pads come on and, you know, it's time to really get after it, we'll, that's when we'll actually know. But from what I've seen um, and what I've heard from where these guys have been, um, hearing, you know, what their coaches had to say about them in the press, um, nothing but great things. And so that's always a good sign, you know, of a, of a solid signing, uh, free agent signing um, class uh, that we're in the right direction. Willie Smith, I uh, believe in Panther super fan says sacks are sexy, but stopping the run and great coverage is going to be key for defense. Um, I, I agree with that. And it seems like they're going for like a, <clears throat> like a pack mentality. And, and I noticed a lot of the signings they're doing are like one year, two year deals. Like there's no long-term deals going on. It's almost like they're kind of seeing who can work in this and who cannot work in this. And all of them, it feels like on the defensive side of a connection to uh, Ebro in some shape or form, they work with him somewhere. And it feels like the offensive ones, all of them have some sort of connection to Dave Canales in some shape or form or Dan Morgan in some shape or form, either you scouted them or whatever. So they're all guys that are kind of familiar with, it feels like. So every story is the same when it comes in. This guy was drafted here. He worked with Dave Canales in Seattle or he worked with Dave Canales in Tampa and and then in, or he worked with each row. Uh, in David, Denver. David Moore, he's coming back and has connections to both of them. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's like they're, they're being very meticulous about who they're bringing in, which I do like. Um, and now I'm just kind of sit back and watch it in a macro view. And it's like, OK, they fixed the interior. Well, we hope they fixed the interior of the offensive line. Uh, they have picked up some stuff on defense. They kind of, I think they've kind of replaced Frankie Louvu, which sounds weird with the Josie Jewell signing. It sounds almost like an identical type of player you can put in there that actually fits better in the scheme that we're going to be running. Um, they've added some pieces on defense. We still got holes at cornerback and wide receiver. They've picked up a, a draft pick, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, now we have two second round picks, which to me is just as good as having a first. Um, if you know what you're doing, like if your scouting department knows what they're doing, then it's fine. That's and that's the trick. You, you know, everybody that's watching, everyone's kind of lamenting that we don't have a first round pick. Yeah, that's fine. But there's teams that have first round picks every year and screw it up. Like you still got to know what you're doing with the pick. It doesn't matter if it's pick 10 or pick 40 like you can get a starter at pick 40 if you if you know what you're looking for and can go get a dog like uh like dan morgan said i think what we've done is really like for instance take a look at the offensive line right you got robert hunt and damian lewis now we have austin corbett solidified as a center right so you go get the main pieces right you get these pieces that you know for sure if you have two guards your, it, it makes the job for the center easier. So now you can actually solidify yourself and say, hey, we at least have something to work out at center. Yeah. You take a look at the draft, right? You build your team through the draft. You build the, the legitimacy of the tenure and the legacy of who you're actually trying to become through the draft. You want to get your own guys and develop them and raise them to be Carolina Panthers. What you go through, what you do now in this free agency, you get main pieces that kind of fit that mold. You got the Josie Jewell. You got uh, the Nation Robinson. You got Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. Those are four guys, four core guys, in my opinion, that they went and got in this free agency that will allow them to go into the draft and say, all right, young buck, I want you to look up Nation Robinson. I want you to look up to Derek Brown. I want you to look up to Josie Jewell. I want you to look up to Robert Hunt. Depend on Robert Hunt if you don't know what to do. Like smart, physical, tough players is what we got in this free agency. And that's going to carry over into this free to this draft and give us a solid like footing as we set out to look for who we are going to bring in. So I think this is a this is probably going to be one of the most exciting off seasons when it's all said and done, um, when we go to training camp. So, you know, you know, the crazy thing too, I've tried to temper my expectations because of the previous two off seasons, like where I felt like I got too excited and then whatever happened <laughs> during the season happened. But this year I feel like I legit have a reason to be excited and I'm trying not to get excited because I don't want to, I don't want to feel that feeling again. <laughs> well, Desmond, well, Desmond, I think it's, it's still monitoring our expectations, right? I don't yeah. think this is, this is not something where we should say to ourselves, Oh, Super Bowl or bust. We got a couple oh, months to get like, there. We yeah. still got we still got time. <laughs> we got time. You still, you still gotta be patient, but you should be excited about the players that we get to watch be raised by good coaching and a general manager that actually has the intentions of building something the right way. 
The, uh, Nugs plays. I think I said that right. Had a good comment on here. He said one year deals because EE has gone next year. That's a good point that he's been hot on the interview trail the past couple of seasons. I don't know how long we're going to be able to keep uh, Ejiro Ivaro uh, here in Carolina, especially if they play really well this upcoming season. You don't um, get a, a comp pick, I believe, if he becomes a head coach, right? I think so. I don't know how high it is. Um, I think it's third, third round maybe. So may, hopefully they got somebody on staff that or slot in, but I mean, that, that means that the defense played really well. So that's a good scenario for us. Uh, I did change the intro last week. I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. I'd almost forgot again. And <laughs> we're very happy that Jonathan Stewart cannot be traded by the Carolina Panthers. So I'm pretty or sure we'll stick with this one for a while. Yeah. Or us. So we're going to stick with this one for a little while. I had a little space to add another player on the graphic, but I'm like, nah, let me just, cause I feel like I'm going to take JC Horn off eventually here too. <laughs> so I'm just leaving it the way it is right now. And we'll see what goes uh, with that. Uh, M. Hole also asked, by the way, ask Skyler what he thinks about Charlotte getting a major league baseball team. So are, are they I would, I'm always going to be a Pirate fan, unfortunately. It's it's painful. But I would love if Charlotte got a baseball team. I just don't know if it's going to happen. I, I think if North Carolina is going to get one, I keep hearing Raleigh's probably more likely. Yeah. But, man, like Charlotte has such a beautiful skyline. <laughs> like I actually think they would get – a significant fan base. I mean, you think about it, all these fans around here are Braves fans. That's because there's no one else to root. There's no one here. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it'd be really cool. The I've heard that too. That if it was in Raleigh, it'd be over by like uh, PNC Arena, that area over there. That um, uh, Tom Dunn the dude that owns the uh, the Hurricanes that they've bought all that because it was just farmland and they just basically planted. There's a lot of great yeah. infrastructure too there in yeah. Raleigh as far yeah, as like people getting in and out, for, you know, travel and stuff like that. So they're, it's they a mess here. Be- it's it's and now I, it's a mess both spots. Charlotte's a different beast. Like it's yeah, it's it can get crazy and uh, trying to get in and out in Charlotte. Raleigh, you can get in and out. It's just it takes a little bit of time and the time of the day, um, but it's not oh, as bad. Well, as but as the freeways that they're developing and all the streets, there's a lot of there's a lot of work that's being done now. Yeah. So that way, five years from now, the infrastructure is already there. Boy, it, man, God, to I me, I think it, it would be a two step plan to get a, a Charlotte baseball team. One, you've got to get rid of the express lanes, so that way people can actually go and use the the damn interstate, and then you have your baseball team. Because there's easy in and out. That, but that's, that's sounded like that sounded personal for Skylar. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we mad, son. I'm gonna tell you why we mad, son. <laughs> Rhythm express lanes. Yo, I just remembered my home. I'm in Kernersville, right? So I'm in between Winston Salem and Greensboro and High Point up here in the triad. Back in the early nineties, uh the Minnesota Twins were actually considering moving to North Carolina and they were gonna build a stadium here in Kernersville. Like it was gonna be in the middle, we're literally in the middle of the state. <laughs> and we're kind of in between I-40 and I-85. So they were actually going to build a stadium literally like 15 minutes from my house here on the outskirts of Kernsville, right outside of Greensboro, uh, where the interstates meet. And now it's a gigantic FedEx hub uh, that instead, like FedEx came in and bought all that land and turned it into a FedEx hub instead. But we almost had pro baseball here um, in North Carolina about 30 years ago. So we'll see maybe if we get one. Let me get to one of these rules here because um, – I'll save the I'll save the tackle thing for uh, just a bit, but uh, this was breaking. This just came out like an hour ago um, before we went on the air. The NFL owners have approved massive revamp to kickoff play. Um, after three days of discussion at the league's annual meetings that are going right now, uh, they're switching. This starts next year um, for a format that originated in the XFL. So it, it, this is going to make your football games look completely different than you've ever seen them really in your life, unless you watch the XFL. Um, so during the 2024 season, the kickers will continue to kick from the 35 yard line, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40 yard line. At least nine members of the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 35 and 30 yard lines up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20 yard line. No one other than the kicker and the returner can move until the ball hits the ground or hits the player inside the landing zone. This sounds ridiculous. Touchbacks will be marked at the 30-yard line. Oh, wow. And no fair catches will be allowed. Oh, okay. And in the event a team wants to attempt an onside kick, it will have to inform officials of its intent and would then be allowed to use the NFL's traditional formation. No surprise onside kicks will be allowed. Okay, there's my first one. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah, like like so we got to announce now when you're going to do an onside kick? Well, I guess you have already to. like a 1% chance you're going to recover it. The kickoff is dead. The kickoff has it's been dead for a while now, really, to be honest. Like uh, the, the whole conversion thing, like if in, instead of an onside kick through the fourth and fifth. As man, hit the, hit, hit the button. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we mess it. I'm gonna tell you why we mess it. Man, listen. <laughs> I'm gonna kick back for this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. The That's NFL cool. right now is really messing this up. The reason why the kickoff and the kickoff return is monumental as far as like the starter, right? It, it gives us the excitement of like, oh, will he break? Will he break a run? Will he find his way through? The, the kickoff team and find himself in the end zone. I mean, we've had some really great kickoff returners. You've had the human joystick. Um, you've had so many people been able to showcase their talent in a sense of how fast they how, are, uh, their ability to shake guys. We ain't going to see none of that. We're just going to see guys literally start at one position as a wall, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. go a couple of yards as a wall and the moment that someone does not block it's off to the races and they only have to run like 20 yards like because you're lining up down at the other yeah, team's literally 30, not even 20 40, the returner is going to basically hip hop for 15 and be able to hit a crease there's going to be so many more kickoff returns oh yeah because there's no levels yeah, so that's the reason oh, why. Line. That's the reason. <laughs> that's the reason why it's important to have a four-four guy, a four-three guy, on the kickoff because that's where you get. Like, if if you guys can see me, there's levels. Fast, <laughs> fast guy. Yeah. Slow guy. Tell him, man. So when you when you're going as a runner finding things you can actually find a little lanes and it makes it a little bit more you know exciting to watch because that's where guys on the defense get an opportunity to actually stop you <laughs> right <laughs> when you have just you have when you have a fence like this and all all that happens is that the guy just walks on through and he's gone, especially if he's running on focus. You know what that three. what that means, right? Is like we're gonna see. I, I feel we're gonna see more points. Number one, but we're gonna see total yardage for like quarterbacks, running backs. Like everyone's numbers are gonna take a little bit of a hit because you're having better field position, more than likely. Yeah, because at this because I saw I saw a little bit of the footage of the XFL one on a uh, get up before we started doing this, so I could kind of see what it looked like. And literally, all they they're just the kicker's still way back, you know, where he's supposed to be. But they're just they just moved everybody up and they're facing each other. Like there's like five yards, ten yards in between you. I think it's five yards in between you. And then yeah. they can't move until either the ball hits the ground or until somebody touches it in that, now, that zone. So like you can't even like squib kick it. You have and, to kick it into the the, the area for receiving. Can they keep order. another person back like with the kicker? I think uh, I think I, I think I did say that as, as because like in... I mean you, you feel like you have at least a chance to to run a guy down if he breaks through if you have someone back there with a kicker kicker's got no damn chance but like that's a great point that's right. an excellent point um look now this... he, hey now kickers the kickers gonna have to be running four threes <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need a hey. Tavon Austin's gonna have to learn how to kick. Maybe you can <laughs> stick around. The hey, listen. The only time in the dra in, in the NFL combine that's gonna matter now is if a kicker can a kicker kick and run and run a full foe. <laughs> well, God, we're gonna have fifty million dollar kickers out here that are uh, determined. And, and can hit. Like you need a Pat McAfee type. You know? Yeah, somebody like, can just put the hammer down. down. <laughs> um, it says at least nine members. Wait, okay. The kicker will kick from the thirty-five. The other ten. No, so it's just a kicker by himself. Uh, kicker yeah, by I feel himself. Like you should be able to put someone back there if you want. I thought I saw you can. The offense can shift. They couldn't do this before. You can put six on one side and four on the other uh, for onside kicks. So if you're going to announce it, you can at least stack one side of it. I'm still like you're announcing the onside kick, like the the Sean Payton onside kick in the Super Bowl, like the start off the Super Bowl, never happened again. Like it, you can't really do it that way because now you have to announce that you're doing the onside kick so Man, it's if, like if the nfl basically just wants the nfl to score more points yeah 
now they're saying it's for you know safety. Nah, they, they reduce they concussions and kickoffs and they could have just left this in the XFL. If you want to watch that, go watch it go watch in the that. spring <laughs> and watch guys break loose on the kickoff return. I mean, this whole thing right now is basically watching goal line defense or fourth and third and one defense, fourth and one defense, and you basically take a trap dive and all it takes is for one slip through the crack, and now you're off to the races. You get one good juke on one dude, and there's nobody in front of you but a kicker that's already way back at the 35-yard line. And hopefully, really he, and hopefully he's the best athlete on the team at that point. <laughs> in some ways, like, I get the point of them trying to say, like, it's a concussion thing, but I almost think, too, like, it could be just as bad, if not worse, because it's almost like you're doing the freaking Oklahoma drill, and mm-hmm. you're just – teeing off on each other like yeah. that where if you've got the whole field to run you can either avoid or go at a certain person a certain way where if you're right here and right here it's a collision you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. i don't know maybe i think i don't i don't have the data behind it but uh, to me the kickoff's been kind of not really in the game anymore as i mean if really I'm ever since kick, they moved the if ball, i'm right? on kick if i'm on kickoff i'm pissed yeah, <laughs> I'm a special team player. You just changed my job. <laughs> you literally just changed I'm my get, job. I'm getting cussed out every week for what <laughs> being at being part of the line. Yeah, and getting, <laughs> you, could, and, you couldn't get to him fast enough. You couldn't listen. Like all it takes is basically a guy just hemming you up, and then like, yep, like it's, there's gonna be some oh. holding calls for sure, and yeah. just too many penalties, man. Like yeah. leaving. This is what there's going to be too many penalties. It's going to start off at what? What does it start off at? The 15 yard line? The 35 uh, yard line? They line up. So the kicker's at his uh, 40. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no. He's the kickers line up at their 35 yard line. Uh, the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40 yard line. At least nine <laughs> members of the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 35 and 30 yard lines. So that so almost sounds like there's going to be a, that have to line so up. There, so beat. there's just going to be all types of holding penalties, and we going it's going to they're going to be starting on the fifty yard line every time. It well, sounds ridiculous, but well, I will say this: like I'm open to seeing how it plays out because I also thought the pitch clock in baseball was going to be horrendous, and I well, love it. The, so, Skyler, Skyler, you ain't got no choice but to just be okay with it. <laughs> it's going down. It's going down. The wording in this is is catching me now. That I'm reading it the second time. At least nine members of the return team will line up in a setup zone. So that means on the return team, you don't have to line up all nine guys on the line. You can set them up in formations or whatever in that zone between the 35 and the 30. Up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20. So they can't be past the 20-yard line. And the returners can't be beyond the twenty yard line. It's a man, it's a mess. So, so what happens? <laughs> so what happens if you quote unquote squib kick it? I know it'd be a long squib, but if it hits your player and then trickles through, is it a dead ball? Like re kick? Like what? It, I don't know. Or do you have to? Or is, is the squib eliminated? And you just have to drop it in if you want to. You have to it. drop it in. I think like you can't squib kick it anymore because i mean the whole point of a squib kick is to kind of get it to a different level than the returners right like get somebody else to return it but that's been eliminated so it's like if you're squib because i feel like doing? with with this you actually have a chance to like get some of those so-called squib kicks or long onside kicks because you're like right here and right here and the returners got to be so far back right yeah yeah so He's- i think there's probably even a chance that you might see some of those that drop in and get recovered I don't know. I don't think this is, <laughs> is going to work. <laughs> but, hey, they like to tinker with things. And I'm already seeing uh, Panther Prime podcast says they did say that the 2024 season is the trial test for the new kickoff rule. They will vote again on it in 2025. So we'll we'll let them. We'll see. But the days of Deion Sanders like high a, stepping down the field, that might be over. Um, this this should have been like a preseason trial. Yeah, Not a regular season. It wasn't the preseason. I agree with that. Um, and and then if it works out, then implement it in the regular season the next year. Like I'm already seeing that they're wanting to go to 18 games already. So uh, I'm I'm actually waiting for that to drop. It'll probably drop after we get off the air today. Um, they're gonna go ahead and move to 18 games and just keep or make it two preseason games, I guess, or something. Um, the other stuff that came out uh, from the league, uh, some rule changes. Uh, 
teams now can receive a third challenge after one successful challenge. Previously, teams had to be successful on two challenges to receive a third. Uh, the Lions uh, submitted that proposal and it was accepted by the owners. Uh, also, if there's a double foul during a down in which there's a change or changes of possession, including if one of the fouls is a post-possession foul, like a uh, un, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Unnecessary roughness or unsportsmanlike, unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, if there's one of those by a team during a scrimmage kick, the team last gaining possession will keep the ball after enforcement for its foul, provided it did not foul before the last gaining possession. So basically, if there's off if there's double fouls, the team that was kicking will keep the ball as opposed to that actually makes sense. That's actually one of the ones I was mad about last year. Um, if there's a double foul, and say like you're punting, and there's fouls, like say there's holding and then um, holding on the other team too, then the other team would get the ball back. The team that was punting. They'll keep the ball as opposed to the ball still changing possession. The one that I, I'm surprised they didn't put in there, and I, I don't know how this has not got submitted yet, is the fumble through the back of the end zone. Like that to me is the dumbest rule ever. You fumble the ball through the back of the end zone, the other team gets the ball. What the hell yeah. do they do to deserve it? Yeah. Like, and they get it at the 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody brought it up. Nobody brought it up. The main, uh, the main thing that happened though. Uh, Dude's about to come out of retirement. You so can tack on some more yards. Me, tell you that. So the NFL has eliminated the hip drop tackle. Um, first, before we get into this, for those that don't know exactly what this is, can one of y'all give the definition of a hip drop tackle? It's exactly yes. what it sounds like. A hip that, drop tackle means using your body weight to tackle a guy. You grab onto a guy's hip because he's bigger than life. <laughs> And you weigh probably at a third of the guy's size, aka you trying to tackle Derrick Henry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you grab his waist to tackle him. And you basically use your weight to bring him down. The momentum of him going 4 4 speed at 250 pounds <laughs> and your dangly arms as a safety or what have you is grabbing on for dear life and saying to yourself, I'm trying coach, but try harder. <laughs> All right. I got to use the force of my weight because that's physics. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to tackle this guy. Otherwise I'm going to be out there looking like a fool. Otherwise I'm just going to let this guy run right by me. Yep. Is that what you want? Is that what we're wanting right now? Is for guys like myself, I, I played at 240 pounds, 235, 240 pounds, 5'10. If this is the case where you're allowing now guys to just run by you because they can't tackle you, basically a hip, a, a drop hip, a hip drop, hip drop, hippity hop, <laughs> drop it like it's hot. <laughs> It's a freaking tackle, man. I am a running back. I've been tackled like that mo on multiple occasions. I've had high ankle sprains. I've had MCL tears. I've had it all from these types of in from these types of tackles. But I even understand how unfair of an advantage this is for the defense. This is not what we're wanting. We sign up for this. When I've been injured, I think to myself, dang. I should have I should have dipped out of that a little bit differently as a mm. runner. That's how I think about it. Now it's a, and some of these things are just freak accidents, right? That's yeah. just the nature of the game. But for you to just put me in a situation with a defensive guy where he's got to sit there and be indecisive about what he's going to do, make a business decision as far as let me run by him <laughs> or like, you know what I'm saying? Because not every, not every occasion is where there's a tackle being made head on. These things are happening side, like side swipes. There's a, this, it's a side tackle. <laughs> like, I don't know, but like, like I understand the NFL trying to protect the players, but this is doing too much. I understand tech protecting the neck, protect the head, you know, protect the unprotected, you know, as far as the receivers catching routes over the middle and all those types of things. But, I mean, last year we were at a four-year low in um, in lower extremity injuries. 
So what's the deal here? Like, who's calling for this? It says the player association is adamantly against uh, the rule uh, here in this uh, this article from the AP that dropped today. Um, a violation will result in a 15 yard penalty and can ultimately result in fines for players. What? Um, so you can get fined for doing what you've been doing since Mighty Might Pee Wee football. Um, the first thing I thought of was the the tackle that injured Bo Jackson. If you go back and watch that injury when he, he, they were playing, I think Buffalo or Cincinnati, I can't remember, but the guy, Bo was running top speed and the guy got him from behind and, and, and got like this and Bo was still running and the guy slid down and latched onto his like left leg or whatever. And with Bo running so fast, he literally ripped his hip out of socket because the guy kind of locked his leg because he slid down. I guess that's what this is, but is that's this really a happens. trial too or no? I uh I don't think it's a trial. I think this is this, this is something is, this, that's weird. Yeah. I mean, you just think about it. We we've talked for how many years that you don't want to hit from heat from the neck up, right? We've been teaching that to these kids for years, and we we've been teaching them to hit the midsection, and the, that's including the hip because that's quote unquote a safe area. You don't want to go at a guy's legs if you don't have to. I mean, if you dive for it, whatever, but you get the point. Yeah. So now the tackle box is what this? Like that's right what? Here? Yeah, I was going to see. That's what I was going to ask you guys. So you can tackle him from here. Got to hit him in the heart. Hit him yeah. in the heart. <laughs> hit him hard. <laughs> What's the Friday Night Lights saying? <laughs> all, all, all hearts. So, what is it? I can't remember now. You can hit him from the, the the the. I guess the shoulder down to the torso, abdomen. So, what, so that DK Metcalf rundown on the on the picks. Almost pick six against Arizona a few years yeah, back. Yeah, he getting fine. He getting that. Fined. That'd be a freaking fine. That was no, one of the greatest. Certain, that was one of the greatest tight. sports plays of all time. So what's he and supposed to do? Just let him score? Yep, he's supposed <laughs> to get it. Supposed he's supposed him. to run all the way in front of him and look at him and say, <laughs> and "Wrap him up, bear hug him." Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready for this? Somebody, right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna grab your hip. And you I'll have to gain to permission. Right That'll be the next thing. Can I tackle you? <laughs> you have to get if you get permission, yes. So, like, I posted on Twitter the other day or yesterday. <laughs> Mike Mitchell, like he did an interview and he basically like was like, "Hey, like, at, what's next? You're gonna have me ask for permission to tackle these guys?" Like, <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> Is that okay? Look, Mark Burke says Pat McAfee just said, "Throw yourself in front of the player like a flopping dolphin." <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> <You're literally> just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to do here. Oh, like, man, listen, but, like, all I know here. is if you are a fantasy football player, a fantasy football owner, if you got Derrick Henry, you win. Which, That's you win. This go Derrick Henry like about that. to have six extra yards per carry because of this rule. He's going to have like a 4,000 yard <laughs> from scrimmage <laughs> season because nobody will know how to tackle him. Just like, like, Dang, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Grab my stun. Grab my I mean, stun. honestly, why hey, even coach? I got <laughs> coach. I got mortgage. I got a mortgage to pay, coach. I can't. I ain't getting fine. Why I even throw the ball? Like, it, it, why put the ball in 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 flight when you can just hand it off and people get out of your way? Yeah, yeah. you put it in yeah. flight to a screen. You put it in flight yeah. to a swing. You put it in flight to a flat. Because that's we, where you're gonna have to. You have a Derrick Henry going against these DBs and safeties. That's exactly what you want. Derrick Henry's screen game is about to be for real. Barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. We need to get a defensive player on so we can talk about this maybe next week because I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Like, if you're a defensive player, what are you thinking now? Like, they hate it. It's instinctive anyway. Like, how are you thinking about switching? Yeah. Like, if you're a defensive player, you might as well come over here and play offense. (laughs) Oh, my God. They they can't touch you over there. So, I mean, it's almost like getting to the point where it's like tag football. <laughs> like, I feel bad for defenders. Like, they're getting flagged every Man, other God play. Forbid, oh, God forbid an offensive player get tagged with this dang penalty <laughs> when there's an interception or a fumble and they oh. got to go and tackle somebody. <laughs> like, <laughs> they go, oh, look, I don't tackle every day. This is what I do. This show I, up Monday with a $5,000 fine drop. <laughs> for a tackle that they had to make on Sunday. That's horrible. Um, now, maybe they'll do it like uh, the way the refs do holding because, honestly, you could call holding on every play <laughs> if you really wanted to. But they're very particular about – when they call it's got to be pretty blatant. I thought there was a certain type of tackle. It's like a um what's it called? It's called like a swivel hip drop tackle. So I guess it's when you do what I was saying, but you kind of twist your body to bring them down. 
So that's supposed to be the difference. So you can still do the hip drop tackle. You just can't do that kind of hip drop tackle where like you're yeah. using your weight to, to bring you're them using down. Your weight. To but swivel. That's how you tackle. <laughs> the swivel portion of that is the momentum of your body as you're dropping your weight to bring a guy down. Physics says if a guy's if the car is moving, right? If the car is moving at a at a speed where you can't just stop that car, your body is going with it. Yep. If at some point your strength and your weight outperforms the speed of the car, eventually the car will stop. But it becomes a swing pattern of your body catching up to the car. It's crazy. Yeah. Just, just push everybody. Just push everybody instead of tackling. Just push them. Push them real How is it possible <laughs> that we can get this pissed off in March? I, mean, <laughs> right? I think we've had more uh, of these. Yeah. Today, yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we mad. I'm gonna tell you why we that mad. we had during some of the games during the season, <laughs> just because of these rules, like they're doing too I, I much. Get it. There's a lot of there's a lot at stake here for these owners and you know the commissioner. They're trying to make this game safe and make it more approachable and you know protect the future and all that. But look, if you ain't trying to get hurt, <laughs> sign up for something else because right. you gonna get hurt. Man. It's Listen, football. I've been it's hurt football. all my life. <laughs> it's now football. I. And like I've been blessed to not be able to have to like you know have like serious you know neck or you know crazy head injuries or whatnot, but like it comes with the territory. Sprained ankles, high ankles, broken ankles, broken feet. Like hopefully you, it just doesn't come in. In, in it, hopefully it doesn't come to you. All right, if you play in this game, and for those that have you know had you know life-threatening injuries you know i think about um the quarterback um uh what's his name chief's quarterback back in the oh, day. Uh, alex smith alex, alex smith. smith right yeah. Yeah. like terrible terrible injury man like you hate that for a guy you hate that for anyone to have to go through sure what dies, he's went through like those are terrible terrible things but it it kind of the nature of the game you know what i'm saying and Guys are trying their hardest to keep guys upright and, and not be dirty players and, and just do their job. Like, I've been tackling this way all my life, and now you're telling me that I'm supposed to come correct? At age 27 I'm, or whatever it is. Like, I, I got to change 27? It. You're talking about guys that are 33, 30, <laughs> 35. Man, so uh, before we got to get out of here, because I got a hard out at 1130, uh, the Ultimate Panther 53-man roster, we did tight ends um, this week. I only put up one. Um, the f- top two advance to the roster, and next week I'll put up uh, a current roster of what we have so far. We've already picked quarterback, uh, wide receiver, uh, the offensive line, and the offense and defensive coordinators and the head coach. And I'll put up something, uh, so we can see what we've got so far. But tight end wise, uh, pretty much went the way Greg we thought. Yeah, Greg Olson yeah. with seventy seven percent. Wesley Walls is your tight end number two at 22%. Jeremy Shockey and Thomas did not receive votes. But uh, I wanted real quick before we got out of here, Stu, you played a majority of your career with Greg Olson in your offense. Tell us what it's like having a tight end like Greg Olson. If I'm not mistaken, he's the only tight end still in NFL history uh, to have three back-to-back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons at tight end. Um, I don't know if that means Hall of Fame or something down the road. That's something nobody else has ever done in that position. I think it should be considered, but – Tell us real quick what's it like playing with Greg Olson. He seems like a really smart uh, football yeah. player. Uh, Greg's one of the smartest people in general that I've ever been around. Um, you know, he thinks for himself. He he knows a lot about a lot of things, um, not just a little bit. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to a, a huddle, right? There's, it's always nice to have a guy in that huddle that knows what every single person is doing. Like I'm talking about every single play um, and just like he studies his his teammates like he under he, he knows when a guy's feeling down or he knows when a guy needs a little, you know, uptick, you know what I'm saying? And so him and Cam in that huddle, like sometimes Cam will be talking to the defense, you know, talking smack after he just, you know, basically, you know, you know, bullied his way for a first down and carried six guys on his back. And he's sitting there talking, you know, talking that stuff. And he gets to play in his head, headset, but he might have missed it. But for whatever reason, 
Greg Olson always <laughs> knew the play. <laughs> <laughs> and so like he would like wait to see if Cam will say it and he'd be like, hey, bud, this is what this is what I heard. This is what I heard. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, just a guy that was just always on it, just a class act every day at practice, catching balls after practice. Um, so it was no wonder why he caught everything that was around him because he worked at it. I mean, this guy caught probably a thousand balls a week um, when it's all said and done. And so, you know, this guy, he, he's a, he's one of the, in my opinion, you know, one of the greatest tight ends to play this game, um, obviously. And, you know, and it doesn't come by accident because he works his tail off. Um, he studies his behind off, you know, you see right now in his post football career, he's one of the best at it because he puts in the effort, he puts in the time, um, into his craft. And I mean, he's been doing, you know, TV, like I think probably five years before he retired. And so yeah, he, yeah, he, was, he, yeah. would, he would, he would get on, he would get on a jet right after, you know, OTA practices and stuff like that and go and, and do his thing. And so, um, much deserving. Obviously, he's the top, you know, the best Panthers uh, tight end of all time. But, you know, arguably, definitely up there in the top five range of tight ends of all time, in my opinion, just because of he's just a great asset. He's a security blanket. Whenever there was something that we needed, um, when it comes down to a third and eight, a third and 11, Greg Olson's going to always be open. And think and think about that too for a second. That he's the only tight end to have three thousand yard, one thousand yard seasons back to back to back. Like, and think of all the other tight ends from uh, Mike Ditka all the way down to Tony Gonzalez, Tony Gonzalez, e- even uh, uh, Gronk, oh Gronk, Gronkowski, Gronk, uh, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey, that's what I was trying to. I, I had Taylor Swift's face in my head, and I was like, "Hey, why you, what's her boyfriend's name?" Travis Swift. <laughs> what's her boyfriend's name? So Taylor, Taylor Swift, <laughs> like, yeah, she played great at tight end. <laughs> none of none of them have done that before. Like, and I think a lot of people are calling Travis Kelsey the greatest tight end the of all IQ. time at this point. But yeah, the IQ of Luke Keekley and and Greg Olson like combined is like on got the same be roster. Really, yeah, like, yeah, so that's that's amazing. So that's a really good way to put it. The IQ there, Greg Olson's IQ is probably number one. He got, it comes across on TV, and I hope that he gets a chance to still be in a, a good position commentary wise because he's actually really good. I actually prefer him over Tony Romo. The the Tony eyes, Romo thing is well. off for me. Uh, you know, it was the first year where he was kind of predicting the well, predicting the plays like this guy's gonna go here and go that way, and then it happened, and everybody was all like, "Oh my god, he's a savant!" Like, what is he doing? And then he got the big money, and now it's like he just says he's the same three the words. Yeah, he just does it all the time. He just says the three lines over and over and over again. I'd rather have I don't know, listen. Jim. <laughs> that ball's got to go where the ball's got to go, Jim. <laughs> it's just like stuff like that. And work Greg Olsen, Olsen at. Put yeah, Greg on Greg. TV, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing your Tony Romo voice. What, what Greg does really well, I think, and, and I know we got to get out here, but like what he does really well is he speaks for both sides of the football community, like the people that are very in depth and very knowledgeable in the game, and then also the audience that maybe isn't up to speed on everything and is still trying to learn. And the mm-hmm. way he presents that is like chef's kiss. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it's it's layman starts. He talks to you like he's on your living room couch, like explaining yeah. the football yeah. game to you. And that's that's the style that I like. Um, now, I don't know if Tom Brady, I, th- I thought they said Tom Brady was going to start calling games this upcoming season, but he's the number one. He's the number one. So, and I don't think he's ever done it before. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But shout out to Greg yeah. Olson. Uh, Tom Brady might catch you straight bullets. For <laughs> Just quick rundown. Uh, voted by the fans. If you're on this feed right now, watching on Twitter, go over to the at Believe in Panthers and follow us there. We're doing the fan votes there. It's only the fans voting this roster in. Me and Stu and Skyler, we're just kind of observing what you guys do. You already picked the quarterbacks. QB one's Cam Newton. QB two is Jake Delhomme. You picked the wide receivers: Steve Smith, Moose Muhammad, DJ Moore, Ricky Prohl. Um, the offensive line: Jordan Gross. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Jordan Gross. We put. Uh, Ron Khalil at center. We just advanced him. Jordan Gross at left tackle. Uh, I think Taylor Moten at right tackle. I think Andrew Norwell and it was somebody else. Uh, Trey Turner, I believe it was. Those was that was your offensive line. Greg is now your tight end. Ron Rivera is the head coach, voted by the fans. Sean McDermott's the defensive coordinator. Um, uh, Dan Henning is the offensive coordinator. And am I missing a spot? 
we haven't done running backs yet. We were saving running backs. Um, and that's the last one, really, for offense, I think, because we just did tight end. So do I need to split that up into running back fullback? Because we've had some fullbacks that have come through here. Like, you can Tolbert. put Mike Tolbert, yeah, as a yeah, fullback, Mike, right? Mike, Tol- Mike Tolbert, I mean, talk about a guy that could be labeled as one of the best fullbacks to play. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I love Tolbert. Man, people, my, man, my friends used to clown me all the time because I'd go around and be like, yo, do y'all understand what our regular season record is when Mike Tolbert plays? <laughs> like, there was like a stretch for like two years where it was like, nobody Tolbert. could beat us if he was in uniform. Yeah, we were going to do something. found a way to make that <laughs> thing happen, boy. Uh, bowling ball. I love it, man. Um, I still remember a, a viral video. Of, I think it was you, Mike Tolbert, and like two other people, like in a Dunkin' Donuts or something, and like y'all were around a piano singing. <laughs> do you remember that? Oh yeah, Krispy Kreme. Yeah, Krispy Kreme. Yeah, y'all were there. Just, yeah, yeah. It, it, was during training, it, was. it was during training camp before social media really took off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. If, it was, if we were singing that nowadays, boy, uh, we would have had a better video clarity and all that. It yeah, nice. it's like this grainy video of them in a Krispy Kreme, and there's like a piano or something in there, and they're just they just start singing some kind of yeah, song, like was, a Krispy Kreme there was, song. No, or, there was no piano; it was just it was all vibes. Man. Yeah, it was just hitting the melody. <laughs> And harmony. It was crazy. Yeah, I think I saw it on Facebook. That just reminded me of that. Um, I'm five minutes past my heart out. We got to get out of here. Uh, yo, we'll be back next week. Who knows what's going to happen with the NFL? Maybe they're going to add three more games to the season. Maybe they're going to make it start in uh, August. Nice football. You know? <laughs> yeah, the XFL starts this weekend. Maybe, uh, yeah. I don't know. Me and Skylar said we weren't too sure. You going to watch some games too? Because we, we might talk a little bit about it next week. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna be watching it. I'm you gotta find a team. You gotta find a team. Yeah, that's the trick. It. I gotta find a team. I don't think we have one. Do we have one around here? Like a, a close one? So we gotta figure out who we're gonna like root on <laughs> into this season. Um, so we'll get some of that as well. It'll be open mailbag. Probably tell them why you're mad. Yeah, you should pick a team and come back next week and then and like, do like a you know, whoever wins or whoever lo- whoever has the worst record. Oh, they gotta, oh they each of us pick a team. Yeah, they got they gotta eat something disgusting. Or something. <laughs> on that again. No mayonnaise. No mayonnaise. No mayonnaise. I don't do mayonnaise either. Okay, no mayonnaise. Yo, so we got we gotta get out of here. Uh believe in Panthers. You can find it on the, the Believe Podcast Network. The video is always at youtube.com forward slash at believe in Panthers, or you can find it on Jonathan Stewart's Twitter feed. On uh, my Twitter feed, on Skylar's Twitter feed, we're, we're expanding our social media presence in the off season. So definitely go follow us there. Rate and subscribe. That helps us out a lot. We appreciate everybody that jumps in and watches these. Um, so we are going to get out of here. Believe in Panthers brought to you by Bet Online and Cut. We will see you next week. Keep panning.